Did you know that about 99% of indie games never get released? You start on your game ID with a lot of motivation, but somehow, several weeks later, you find yourself in a downward spiral. One that usually ends with you quitting your project. Was it the feature you couldn't program, or the artwork you didn't like? It's impossible to foresee which problems you'll face while working on your game, but what we can do is to shape your mind in a way that you'll stay motivated to work on your game even with the roadblocks along the way. Which is why in this video, I'll be talking about some common problems that we game developers tend to face while working on our games, and what practical things we can actually do against these. This video is both aimed at beginners who are just starting out, or people who have been doing this stuff for a while. Hope to clear some things up for you. So, whether you've just started making games or have been doing this stuff for a while, you're bound to have certain questions. Which game engine do I choose? What style should I use for my game? Or how do I even know what game to make at all? These are all valid questions to be asking yourself and each one of them has multiple different options, all just adding up to what feels like an infinite pile of them. Where you might have been excited to start working on the next thing, you instead find yourself completely overwhelmed by the amount of options. The game development is simply such a big field, which makes it easy to get overwhelmed by. And this is especially true for beginners or people who are working on a game alone. Because if you are, there are just so many different things you have to consider. Game engine, programming skills, style, art, music, marketing, you name it. It's a big list and definitely not weird to get overwhelmed by. In fact, it's probably healthy that you do because you don't want to find yourself chasing all of these things at once. So depending on who you are, I've got two ways you could go about this. The first, and one I've kind of already hinted at, that is to learn one thing at a time. When you're just starting to get into game dev, it's often very exciting and fun to jump into all of these different topics at once, but I sincerely advise against this. If there is a way to get overwhelmed as a beginner, it's probably this. So please, if you are doing multiple things at once and do feel overwhelmed, consider doing just one or max two things at the same time. Consume content wisely to learn some basic knowledge and tips and tricks, and leave some room to experiment for yourself. Now, the other approach, and basically the complete opposite of what I just told you, but that is to just wing it. I only really recommend this to people who are already experienced, but this is also an option, or maybe more like a mindset. You've probably seen Danny or other game dev YouTubers develop games in a way that just feels random. They might have planned a little bit, but are mostly shaping the game as they're working on it. These people take their initial ID and let the process of making it into a game determine its direction. With that, they take a more fluid approach that allows them to change things as they see fit. Again, more experienced people can do this because they already know how to make games, making it easier for them to adapt to new problems. So, if you feel overwhelmed by game development, tone it down and try to learn one, max two things at once. Alternatively, as a more seasoned developer, you can take the approach to just wing it and adapt where necessary. Okay, so you finally decided to start working on your dream game. Filled with the initial excitement, you immediately get to work and put in some real good hours. The first few days go by completely fine, but on the fourth day, adding a new feature takes a few hours longer than expected. This moves you a little bit further away from your end goal of making your game, but only by a few hours. The next day, you continue working on your game, but yet again, it took you about three hours longer to implement this new system. Slowly but surely, with each task taking longer than expected, the ultimate goal of finishing your game is moving further and further away from you, constantly making yourself feel worse about yourself and lowering your overall motivation to work on the game at all. The problem here is that you're focusing on the wrong thing. Instead of caring about the work that you're doing, and most importantly enjoying Enjoying the work that you're doing, you're focusing on the end result. And if the ultimate goal is to finish your game, then every setback will feel that much worse. Instead of heavily working longer on that new cool feature that you're making, you now find yourself dreadfully suffering through each extra hour that you're working on it, because it ultimately moves you further away from your end goal. So what can you do against this? For starters, let me clarify that having a goal is by no means a bad thing. 
In fact, you should have a goal like this, one that reminds you what you're working towards in times where you feel directionless. But don't hang on to this too tight. I know that for a lot of people, their ultimate goal is to make their dream game, and that behind that goal lies a lot of passion, but it shouldn't dictate everything that you do. Instead, hang on to this dream lightly, not tightly. So, are you less motivated because the tasks you are doing are taking longer than expected? You might focus too much on the end result. Switch your mindset from hanging on to your dream tightly to doing it lightly. Let's take another scenario. You're working hard on a new 3D model for your game. It's been a hot hour since you've started working on it, and it's already starting to look like what you imagined. Take another hour and you find yourself trying to fix the character's left leg. You tell yourself that when you finish the leg, you'll be done. However, another hour later, you find yourself trying to fix the character's left pinky toe or right earlobe. Problem is that every time you've finished fixing up one thing, it somehow seems like another part of the model needed some attention as well. And this quickly turns into a downward spiral, where problem after problem rises up to the point where you question your ability to even model at all. You're suffering from what's called perfectionism, and it's hurting your performance. I know that adding something new to your game is exciting and all, and that you want it to be perfect because you want your game to be perfect, but you simply can't expect this from yourself. Besides, a lot of the details that you think matter won't get noticed by 90% of the people. Prime example of this is Lethal Company. If you look at that game, do you think the creator stood still trying to fix a character's left hand or right leg? No, not at all. This game's art style is basically a bunch of low quality models with a cartoony shader on top of it to patch things up. Yet, it still became famous. So, what can you actually do against perfectionism? I've got two practical tips for you. So, a lot of what perfectionism comes down to is wanting to make something perfect the first time you do it. However, this isn't a very reasonable thing to ask from yourself. In fact, I actually strongly advise against trying to make something in one go. Instead, try to appreciate the process a little bit more by working on it in iterations. You might start by creating the most important part in your first iteration and add in the details at a later stage. This can break the habit of trying to fix one detail after another by essentially splitting up these different tasks into separate iterations, kind of like creating a sketch before working on the actual artwork. And there is no one-size-fits-all to splitting up your work, which is why I recommend experimenting and trying to separate your work into iterations that feel comfortable with you. Additionally, the approach of using iterations makes it clear for your brain that certain unfinished parts are simply part of the process. However, there's one extra thing you can do to make this even more obvious. So, do you know the label Work in Progress, or WIP for short? Well, this might sound a bit odd, but with each new asset, plan, piece of code, whatever, you're going to implement this label in it, and you want to make it as visible as possible. Write it onto a separate layer on top of your artwork, or put it in capital letters inside of the file name. This will serve as a constant reminder that the thing you're working on is in fact a work in progress, and therefore doesn't have to be perfect. And if I'm completely honest, within game development, and especially as a beginner, it's healthy to take on a mindset where basically everything is a work in progress, and could therefore change at any time. So. Do you find yourself needlessly trying to fix the details you might be suffering from perfectionism? By dividing the work into different iterations, you essentially split up your task, which allows you to focus on one thing at a time. Additionally, it's healthy to consider your work as a work in progress and that anything can change at any time. To make this even more obvious, try to implement the label work in progress or WIP into your assets as a constant reminder of this. All right. So you're working hard on your game, you've been programming the most important features for the past couple of weeks and are now going to add some new models. A week later, you added some fitting models to your game and now you're going to make some music to liven up the mood. You finished that and now you need some animations for your characters and after that sound effects to fit with these animations. You might not realize it, but in the meantime, you've taken up a multitude of different jobs. Programmer, 3D artist, music composer, sound designer, there are just so many different professions within game development. Yet, for some odd reason, there seems to be a common belief amongst indie game devs that if you're gonna make your own game, you should make everything yourself, but that just isn't very realistic. Do you really expect yourself to be taking up 10 different jobs and still perform at your best while doing so? Of course, go ahead and learn new skills along the way as you need them, but if you're gonna learn an entire new skill just to do that one thing, think again. But if you don't, who will? 
Well, there are actually a lot of places where you can get exactly what you want for a relatively low price. Think about the Unity Assets Store, Unreal Marketplace, or HIO Store, where there are continuous sales and people uploading new assets all the time. Additionally, the online web store Humble Bundle sometimes offers some crazy bundles where you can get hundreds of assets for a cheap price of just few tens of dollars. Buying these assets instead of making them ultimately saves a lot of your valuable time that you can now spend on the things you already know how to do. Alternatively, your situation might require a very specific type of asset. Maybe you want a specific character or a specific type of music. In this case, you can take the alternative option to have someone make it for you. If you're lucky enough, someone you know might be able to help you, but your best bet probably lies with a platform like Fiverr. Here, you'll find people that offer their services in the form of a gig that you can buy. If you do so, you basically have to send them a list of requirements of what you want, after which they'll get to work and try to finish it within a set time. And if you don't like the result, there are usually a set number of revisions, allowing you to request some changes. Though some gigs might not have any revisions, so you should check this. If you're curious about the pricing, Fiverr offers both high-end and low-end products for varying prices, so it really just depends on your capacity and needs. So do you feel like you need to make everything for your game yourself? Think again. There are countless of other options online, such as the Unity Asset Store or Humble Bundle, where you can get a lot of assets for a relatively low price. Need something more specific? Take a look at a platform like Fiverr, where freelancers offer their services for a certain price tag. Now, the final topic that I want to talk about in this video is one that may lie quite sensitive to you, and it's got something to do with your social life. When I first started making games a few years back, I did so because I wanted to do it, not because someone else told me to. And I think this is the case for most of us. With that said, it's very likely that you started your journey on your own and might still be on your own. You're excited about game development and want to share this with the people around you, but no one truly understands you. You don't have a sense of community and there's a level of depth missing from the conversations that you have about game development. Now, you might actually think that the problem here is that you don't have any game developers as friends, but the pink elephant in the room is that you can't even find game developers to befriend in the first place even if you wanted to. But why does this matter? Well, if you're on your own, you're working towards your own goals and that makes it easy to slip up on it. Oh, I can do this tomorrow instead or ah, oh, I could play this game right now, it doesn't matter. But in a group group or community, it won't just be your goal you're working towards, but the same goal as those of others. You're essentially doing it together with these people, and that gives you a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and a sense of that you're part of something that's bigger than you. And this helps a lot with motivation. Additionally, once you have some game developer friends, you might keep each other accountable or participate in game jams together. This is truly something that I wish I had known and something that I wish I focused on when I just started making games and would have probably made my journey that much smoother. So judging from the fact that you're still here, you're probably looking for some connection, which is why I'll give you this advice. You won't find other game developers by going outside. Chances are you're still living at home and your parents do all of the groceries and the only time you really get outside is if you have a really good reason to. And other game developers are like this too, so you probably won't find them outside a lot. So what do you do to find like-minded people to talk about games or game dev related things? Well, for starters, you could click the link down below and join the Discord server right now. No. But seriously, in this technology-driven world, online communities such as Reddit, YouTube, and Discord are thriving places to find like-minded people. So again, this time without joking, I do recommend checking out the Discord server using the top link down below. Other people who watch this video or this channel and are also looking for a connection are already waiting for you. Click the link and join now. Alright, as you've seen throughout this video, game development is quite a big field with a lot of ifs and ends. We've been able to go through multiple problems that many game developers, and definitely me included, face all the time, and taken a look at some practical things that you can implement to stay motivated. If you're interested, I've got a series about immersion in video games that I'm currently still working on, and we'll soon make a video about how you can learn a new skill, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video, like the video if you liked it, leave a comment down below and tell me what you like and I hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye.